right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. What today we'll do? Well, who knows what we'll do today. Actually, I do know what we're going to do. First, we're going to go back into the tile map. And we're going to add some collision polygons to the tile map. So we'll do that first, and then we'll make a player so that we can actually play the game. Let's see here. Collision. Yep, that's what we want to do. So we click the collision button after we've selected the correct tile. And all we need to do is we either use this, which is a new rectangle collider or a polygon collider. We all just need these. So it's a simple process of clicking like so. Make sure and you see what I just did. I just added one there. You can actually add multiples to it. And you don't, you don't want to do that. Actually, here's where I yes, there. So I've got one on each now. Okay, we'll probably speed this up so that you don't have to sit here and watch me clickety clack on all of these, these little tiles, because it is quite tedious, if you will. All right, now we're finished with that. That's a butte right there. And we have, I believe we have everything. So good. Now we can go back. And what we'll do now is we'll create a player. So let's create a new scene. And we'll do a two, we'll do a new custom node. And we'll do a kinematic body 2D. We'll rename him player because that's what he is. He's our player. And I don't, I believe we should spell player the correct way. What about you? We'll make a collision object or collision shape. We'll also add us a little sprit, or some people like to say sprite. And we'll add a animation player. I'll rename you Anim in the collision shape 2D. Oh, and we also want to make this window smaller. Okay. So to select the sprite we want, we'll just drag in our texture here. And what's nice is, oh, that's another thing that I remember that I forgot to tell you at the beginning. I removed the offset and the texture separation of one pixel between each of the, or separation of one pixel between each tile. I did that so that I could use this uh, in the animation of the sprite instead of having to turn on region and then change all these and use texture region down here. Anyway, it's just a lot easier just to tell it that, you know, I have uh, five vertical frames and 10 horizontal frames, and then I can just cycle through these as I need to. It's just much better. So I did, I removed uh, those spaces between them so that I could do that. And I forgot to tell you that. But that was an easy thing, fairly easy thing to do. And it's done now. So let's say we want this little fella right here. And one other thing we want to do also is our offset. We don't want it centered, but we do want it centered on the X. And we want, we really want the pivot point to be at the bottom. The reason we want the pivot point to be at the bottom is so that whenever, because we want to, we want to be able to scale him like that. And it scales from the pivot point. So that's why I just changed where the little feller is. Yeah, that works. That works very nicely. So let's create a, a, um, a collision shape. And what we can do is we can do the same thing for this collision shape and put it in the same area. And we'll create us a capsule shape. And that's not going to that's not going to something we want to do is that we want to actually put it at zero. And uh, we probably want to put it at minus six as opposed to minus 12. Uh, or maybe even smaller than that because it's going to get very tiny. Now that's, that's actually what we want, but we, he's, he's very close to being a circle, actually. Let's go to minus far and see if that works. And it kind of does. He's mostly a shade. I uh, make him just a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. And we'll make it minus 4.5. Uh, that looks that looks okay to me. Great. There's our sprite, our collision shape. And something else let's go ahead and do. And that is, 
Uh, let's go back to project settings. Let's go to 2D physics and let's name these layers because we're going to use them later. We'll call one default and that'll just be the one that everybody kind of defaults to if you don't set it. Let's call one player. And um, we're going to have things that are pick that you can pick up. So let's say pickups. And we're probably going to have things that you can trigger or that can trigger things. We'll call that trigger. We'll have one called enemies. And I think that about covers it. So what we can do here is we can tell the player himself the, the kinematic 2D body that we have here. <clears throat> we can set his layer to player, a player layer. And then we can say, look, for collisions on the default layer, on pickups, triggers, and enemies. And then we're good. Player doesn't need to collide with himself now, does he? <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> and we're not crazy here. <laughs> All right, I'm saving that. Let's uh, pop on down into the animation player. Let's have another animation, just a quick one. It'll be called idle. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Click the sprite to select it. And I want to trigger, what we want to do first of all is we want to capture the animation frame run. So I'm going to click that. We'll create one. Beautiful. It's a beauty right there. Very nice. Very nice. And notice that the, uh, the update mode is discrete, which is what we want. Um, and this particular idle animation will loop. Uh, and this is not obvious at all. I, don't, I think the UI needs to be changed. It's not very, not, this is crazy. Um, anyway, you click this little button here. And if it's blue, this tiny little button is blue. That means that things are animating. I think that the animation, this button should actually probably be over here somewhere with the controls or something instead of where it is. Um, I think they're going to do some revamping of some of this stuff in Godot 3.2 anyway. So let's keep it at one second and let's do a scale. So we're going to change the scale of this little guy to make it look like he's kind of breathing or something. A little bit of breathing and whatnot. So let's, let's, let's click it up to the, to the half a second and then let's do some scaling here. Let's scale him down in the X and maybe up a little bit in the Y. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, and I didn't keyframe it. How silly of me. I didn't click the button. So we'll scale him down a little bit in the X. Maybe something like that. Up to like 1.5. We'll click the key button. And now we'll hit play. That's not too bad. Actually, I think it could be two seconds long. TBH with you. TBH, that's to be honest. <laughs> Just made that up pretty good, hey? Let's play this now and see what it looks like. Yeah, slower. I like it. I like it. Well, let's, let's print it. Let's do it. It's production value. Right. Great, great job. I'm going to save that. Let's do... Um, let's do a walk. Because everybody needs to walk, right? So Sprite, um, we will need to select which one will we select first? I believe, I, th I think we select this one first. I'm just guessing. We'll try this one here. And I'm thinking we may be something like four tenths of a second or something of that nature. I'm going to go to another tenth and we will mm, here, this little fellow. And the next one will say something like this, maybe. We want to loop this one as well, so we'll click the little button. And we've, we've got this all wrong, don't we? Uh, we probably want to do this one, make that one the one where he plops down like that, say. And then, oops. So we, get, we need to get rid of that one. Rid of it. Point one. Actually, let's just do this. Let's just move them. We can move them around. <laughs> How about that? Let's see what that looks like. That looks really weird, doesn't it? 
let's, let's duplicate that one and put it there. What does that do? I mean, that kind of works, actually. Let's put him really where he belongs, which would be right there. I mean, he's got a little bit bouncy. You know, I don't know. That might be a little bit too bouncy. Maybe just a bit. We don't have that one. Let's try that one instead. What does that look like? Hmm. Actually, I'm going to undo that. And instead of that, let's delete you. Let's go back to this one. And let's add our standing one here. I think that would be much better. And then we'll duplicate this little guy. Duplicate. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. No, don't duplicate here. We'll just do this then. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot less movement. I like that better. Um, as far as how fast, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. That might that might be fun. That might be fun. So let's also add one called jump because we're gonna want to. He's gonna want to jump. Oh, and something else. Let's go back to the walk. We also need to add at the beginning of this keyframe. We want to make sure that the scale is at one. So we want to we want to add a keyframe for the scale as well. Save that, we'll go back to jump. We'll add a keyframe at the beginning of this one as well. We'll set this guy to four tenths maybe. We'll start him on the little, this, this right here. Create, and maybe, uh, this one. This one, and this one. Boom. That's, that's a little bit odd, I know. We may have to squeeze these in some more. Yeah, let's just delete this one. Let's just go here. And let's make it be three tenths of a second. And we'll see what that looks like when we get to actually implementing it, yeah? It looks pretty good to me for right now. We'll, uh, we'll, set, we'll set it right here. So the next thing to do is to create a player script. So we'll do a quick player script and then we'll pass it off until the next time. Now, what we want to do is we want to, at least for this first, you know, to get things started, let's do some, uh, some uh, physics stuff here. And in order to do that, we're gonna need a variable We'll call it velocity, because that's what it is. It's velocity. Uh, vector 2. And actually, we'll do this. We'll set it equal to... Set it equal to 0 at the beginning. And we will want... What we we'll want to do is we want to apply gravity here. So we want some kind of constant that's gravity times delta. So we want it, you know, times that delta time. So let's make a constant. Call it gravity. And uh, we'll say 800. I happen to know 800 works pretty well. And then let's use the kinematic bodies move and slide. So we can move and slide will take a velocity and it will return the leftover velocity, well, the, the resulting velocity after it's calculated its movement and, and uh, any kind of sliding that it needs, that it can, that it will do. Velocity, and then we want a vector two. This, this is the floor, so that'll be a vector two dot up. And we want it to stop on slopes, whoops. So even with just that, if we go into the level one here, and we take out our player, and we stick him in here. But not there, right here. Let's see what happens. Let's see if things actually work. We've set up our collision and everything. 
and it does, but that's the other thing we need to do. Let's open the player scene, go to the sprite animation. That was one thing I forgot to do. Uh, actually, that's on the animated component. Let's go back to idle, and there's a little button right here that says auto play on load. So we want to auto play the idle on load, and that should get us a little player that looks like he's sitting there uh, breathing. As you can see, just a little bit of movement to, you know, indicate life. And I think with that, we will cut it right here. And when we return, we'll probably look at creating a game scene and getting maybe getting the player to run around. Or we may just we may just create the game scene first. But we'll see you in the next one.